Hello everyone! Today I will discuss about shareholders equity. Now, let me show you the different topics under shareholders equity. So for shareholders equity, there are six major topics. What are those? First topic, basic concepts. Second, accounting for original issuance of shares followed by accounting for transactions subsequent to original issuance. Next, accounting for dividends, retained earnings, and for the last topic, quasi-reorganization. Now, each of these major topics has their own video lecture. Therefore, for shareholders' equity, there will be six lecture videos. So, let me welcome you to the first video of the topic shareholders equity. Now, let's discuss first the different basic concepts na dapat na natatandaan nyo when it comes to shareholders equity. First, what is the nature of shareholders equity? Shareholders equity is defined as the residual interest of owners in the net assets of a corporation. Oh, explain natin ng mas, ma, mas madali ito. Ang shareholders' equity kasi, yan ang natitirang interest ng mga shareholders sa assets ng corporation after deducting all liabilities. Therefore, shareholders' equity is measured as the excess of total assets over total liabilities. Okay? So, tatandaan nyo, ang measurement ng shareholders' equity natin ay difference between the assets and liabilities. Okay. Tignan nyo to guys. Naalala nyo kung anong tawag natin dito? Assets is equal to the sum of liabilities and equity. Di ba yan ang basic account equation? Therefore, ang definition ng shareholders equity nakuha lang siya dyan sa basic accounting equation. Now, stated otherwise, para makuha natin ang shareholders equity, Transpose lang natin sa left side si shareholders' equity, then the assets to the right side, then makukuha nyo na yung measurement agad ng shareholders' equity. Diba? Shareholders' equity is equal to uh, assets minus liabilities. Next, let's talk about the different components of shareholders' equity. Remember, there are four components of shareholders' equity. So, ano yung apat na components ng shareholders' equity? Let's start. Contributed or also known as paid-in capital. Second, retained earnings. Third, other comprehensive income. And last one, treasury shares. Yan yung apat na components ng shareholders' equity. Lahat ba ito, i-discuss natin sa 6 lecture videos? Answer, uh, almost yes except for one topic. That is the other comprehensive income. Hindi ko i-cover under shareholders equity ang OCI since it will be covered in another topic which is specifically to be the statement of comprehensive income. Pero dadaanan din natin yung si OCI, mabilisan lang. Para magkaroon lang kayo ng... Uh, general background of other comprehensive income. Alright? Okay. Next, let's move on to the first component of total shareholders equity. That is your contributed capital. Tandaan nyo ah, ang ibang pangalan ng contributed capital ay paid-in capital. Okay. This time, there are three components of contributed capital. What are those three components? Share capital, subscribe share capital, and share premium. Oh, let's define them one by one. Ano bang ibig sabihin pag sinabi nating share capital? Share capital is the portion of the paid-in capital representing the total part or stated value of the shares issued. So, ano yung mga tatandaan natin sa nature ng share capital? Number one, share capital represents shares issued. Pag sinabi natin shares issued, 
yung mga shares ay nasa kamay na ng mga shareholders. Okay? Now, pag sinabi nating shares, we mean share certificate. Kasi ang shares, intangible item yan. Hindi yan nakikita. Pero, nire-representa lang siya ng isang certificate, which is your share certificate. A share certificate, yan ang nagpapatunay na may ownership ang isang shareholder sa isang corporation. Nakasulat doon ang pangalan ng shareholder, pangalan ng corporation, at kung gano'ng karaming shares ang hawak-hawak ng shareholder na yon. Okay? Next. Nabanggit ko rin dito, total par or stated value. Ang shares kasi pwede siya maging par value or no par value shares. Anong pinagkaiba ng par sa stated? Pag sinabi nating par value, nakalagay naka yan sa share certificate. Makikita nyo kung magkano talaga ang value ng isang shares. Okay? Share. Next. Ang stated value naman, hindi yan makikita sa share certificate. Makikita yan sa Articles of Incorporation. Now, take note, there are two classes of share capital. Namely, ordinary and preference share capital. Okay? Now, ito lang tatandaan nyo. Ang isang corporation, hindi pwede mag-issue ng preference share kung walang ordinary shares. Therefore, kapag isang klase lang ng share ang ini-issue ng corporation, meaning ordinary share capital lang yun. Diba sabi ko nga kanina, bawal mag-issue ng preference share kung walang ordinary share. Okay? Next, tapos na tayo sa share capital. Let's move on to subscribe share capital. Ano naman ang pinagkaiba ni subscribe share capital kay share capital? Uh, subscribe share capital is the portion of the authorized share capital that has been subscribed but not yet fully paid. Ang pinagkaiba ni share, ni share capital kay subscribe share capital is that ang share capital naka-issue na yan sa shareholder. Ang subscribe share capital hindi pa yan ini-issue sa shareholder. Ba't hindi pa ini-issue? Kasi hindi pa fully paid. Ito lang isa nyo pang tatandaan. Hindi pwede mag-issue ng share certificate hanggat hindi pa fully paid. Okay? So our general rule, shares are issued only when fully paid. Tandaan nyo yan. Okay? Mga, ang mga subscribe shares, since hindi pa ito ini-issue sa mga shareholders, these are still unissued shares. Alright? Next, share premium. Oh, by the term premium, anong ibig sabihin ng premium? Additional amount siya. Okay? A share premium is the portion of the paid-in capital representing the excess over the par or stated value. Any amount in excess of the par or the stated value, it will be credited to what we call share premium account. What are the different sources of share premium? Maraming sources ang share premium natin, guys. Example, yung normal or yung regular source niya, excess over par or stated value, tama? Next, reissuance of treasury shares at more than cost. Don't worry, i-discuss din naman natin ito in the later lecture videos. Next, donated capital. Issuance of share warrants. Declaration and issuance of small share dividends and quasi-reorganization and recapitalization. Di bali, lahat yan madadaanan natin sa mga lecture videos natin. Don't, ano pa naman eh, uh, first video pa lang naman ito. Puro basic concepts lang muna tayo. Okay, accounting for share capital. There are two methods of accounting for share capital. That is, memorandum method and Journal Entry Method. Yan. Dadaan na natin itong apat na transactions under both methods para makita nyo anong pinagkaiba ng Memorandum Method at ng Journal Entry Method. Okay. First transaction, Authorization for Issuance of Share Capital. Trivia lang ah. Hindi kasi pwede basta-basta mag-issue ng share capital ang isang corporation. It must be authorized by 
SEC. Hanggat hindi ino-authorize ng SEC mag-issue ng shares ang isang corporation, bawal mag-issue yan ng shares. Okay? Kaya ang first transaction natin is the authorization muna. Alright. For the authorization of issuance of share capital, under the memorandum method, wala tayong journal entry. Memo random entry lang siya. Okay? Then for the journal entry method, meron na agad yung journal entry. Okay? Now, ano yung entry ng authorization under journal entry method? Debit, unissued share capital, credit, authorized share capital. Next, issuance. Pag sinabing issuance, binigay mo na yung share certificate kay shareholder. So, under the memorandum method, ano ang journal entry natin for the issuance? Debit, asset. It can either be cash or non-cash asset account. And credit, share capital, tandaan nyo, ang share capital account, nakamesure yan at par or stated value. Any amount in excess of par or stated value will be credited to the share premium account. That's why may share premium account tayo dyan. What about under journal entry method? Debit, asset account, it can also either be cash or non-cash. Then, Observe the credit. This time, instead of share capital account only, naging unissued share capital. Binabawasan naman ng journal entry method yung unissued share capital account dito. Then, credit pa rin tayo ng share premium for the amount in excess of par or stated value. O, third, subscription of share capital. Under memorandum mode, debit asset, for the down payment, kung meron. Kung may down payment or may, kung may binayad agad yung subscriber on the date of subscription, i-debit nyo kaagad yung asset na natanggap nyo sa asset account. Cash or non-cash asset account. Debit, subscription receivable for the balance unpaid. For, or for the unpaid balance. Then credit, subscribe, share capital. Di ba natatandaan nyo yung components ng total contributed capital natin kanina, nakahiwalay mismo ang subscribe, share capital. Para mas, mas separate natin yung portion ng shares issued, portion ng shares issued, at mga hindi pa na-issued, pero subscribe na sila. Okay? And yan, tatandaan nyo lang, kapag subscribe share capital, meaning, naka-reserve na para sa isang shareholder. Okay? Then credit, share premium. Remember, uh, nire-recognize agad natin ang share premium on the date of the subscription. Doon agad natin yan i-recognize. What about under journal entry method? Sagot, pareho lang ang entry nila. Since hindi pa ini-issue, hindi pa pwedeng galawin yung unissued share capital ni corporation. O, last one. Issuance of subscribed share capital upon full payment. So, ang scenario natin dito, nakapagbayad na in full ang subscriber. Therefore, entitled na siya sa mga share certificate niya. Therefore, ibibigay na natin yung share certificate. Ano entry under the memorandum method? First, record mo muna yung nakonekta mong pera or any other asset. Okay? Pero normally, pera naman ang pinambabayad ng subscriber dito. Then, credit, subscription, receivable. Then, for the last entry, i-issue na natin. Tanggalin mo na siya sa subscribe share capital kasi hindi lang siya naka-reserve, pero in-issue mo na siya, kaya papasok yan sa share capital account. Next, what about under the journal entry method? For the first entry, pareho pa rin sila. Pero, doon sa last entry, medyo mag-iiba na siya. Why? Kasi since i-issue na yung share certificate, unissued share capital na ang gagalawin ni corporation dito. Malino ba tayo sa pinagkaiba ng memorandum method at ng journal entry method? Now, alin dito sa dalawang method ang usually ginagamit in practice? Sagot natin ay memorandum method. Pagpasensya nyo na yung pagkabilog ko dahil wala akong mouse dito, naka-mouse uh, 
mousepad lang ako. Okay? Pero, the fact remains, memorandum method ang usual method na gagamitin. Therefore, pagdating natin sa mga susunod na lecture videos, ang method na ginagamit na natin doon ay memorandum method. For theoretical purposes lang ang journal entry method. Alright? And that ends our discussion on the first part of our shareholders' equity. Refer to the next video for the next topic, which is accounting for original issuance of shares.